everyone. Happy Saturday morning from Taiwan. Today's date is January 20th, 2024. The time is 11 a.m. Temperature 70 Fahrenheit, 21 Celsius. I'm in a new part of Taiwan that I never been to before. The name of this place literally means peach garden because this area used to have many peach trees. Well, technically I've been here already, but um, Tao Yan is really known for the area where the airport is located. Taiwan Tao Yan International Airport. But um, I think most tourists and visitors, they skip by the city, they go straight to Taipei taking the, uh, the train or the bus, but I'm not skipping over it today. I'm at the Zhongli district of Taoyuan. The uh, train station is right across from me, this big crosswalk. Took about an hour to get here from the Taipei main station. And uh, before I start, I was reading a little bit about this area. Uh, Zhongli is actually the area where the high-speed rail station is located. Also, the uh, Taoyuan Airport MRT has a station here. There's also a uh, well-known night market. And um, there's actually a lot of people here who, ha who speak Hakka. which is a pretty old dialect of Chinese. And um, there's a lot of people here who settle from Southeast Asia in the Zhongli area. And I could already see it just around this train station. I see some Vietnamese and I was looking at some restaurants. There's also Filipino food too. Yeah, there's a... Uh, there's Thai across the street, and then over here it looks like Vietnamese. So maybe I can get some great Vietnamese food here, I don't know. This will be really interesting. You don't really hear too many people coming to Tao Yen. In fact, uh, when I got off the train, there were a lot more people taking the train into Taipei than coming this way. Let's see what this is. Zhong... Uh, Zhong He? No, Zhong... Zhong Ping something. That's what it says on the gate, so it might be like a commercial district or something that they're advertising. It does look like uh, a lot of areas of Taipei, which I visited. That looks like an interesting street down there. Looks more walkable than over here. Hey look, a Filipino hair salon. And everything is in English. No need to translate here. Haircut is $2.99. Shampoo 200, cellophane 500. Here's the hair salon. Special hair impression. Sing Fu Tang, well known bubble tea spot in Taiwan. This has to be one of the most international 
places that I've visited in Taiwan so far, just judging by the immediate surroundings. Taipei does have a lot, the most international um, restaurants, but it really seems to be scattered throughout the city. It's all roped off. There doesn't seem to be a light here. Just cross at the crossing. There's a lot of stores here. Quanan Fashion Shop. Looks like there's toys on the second floor, a lot of stuffed animals. Hong Kong style drinks. The tea. That's what it says on the, the banner there. There's also a uh, park nearby I want to check out. And also the location of the night market. says almost like a strip mall yeah it kind of reminds me of a strip mall actually Taoyuan I think is the fastest growing city in Taiwan a lot of people they live here in Taoyuan and they commute to Taipei or they go to Sinchu where the semiconductors are and technology. Hey, thank you, Dusk Rabbit, for a dollar ninety-nine. Maybe for a street treat and uh, whoa, I just misstep over there. That did not look level at all, and I went whoop. Oh gosh. So what happens in Taiwan? You gotta really be careful on the sidewalk. Good thing I didn't fall. Thanks Dusk Rat Rabbit. Appreciate the support. It looks like a fairly clean and organized city. It's the main street.
Jonathan says, I think in the future more stores will open because this chair area will change a lot. Yeah, I can definitely see it. That's what happens in a lot of places. Um, the uh, primary city will start to develop and then um, it gets very expensive for people to live there. So the secondary city close by or the suburbs, that's what people will tend to gravitate to to live. Look at this, this is the, <laughs> you gotta be a hiker here to walk on these sidewalks sometimes. I've seen this restaurant before in Taipei. Dukia, it's a um, chain restaurant, fast food. Japanese curry rice. I want to check out the uh, Taoyuan Airport MRT station, the Yulaojie River Station, which is fairly close by. It's just over there. And the uh, night market area is not too far away. There's also a local park called Guanming Park. I could also check out the river. Overall, it looks like a nice area. I'm also noticing as I go into Zhongli a little bit, there weren't, there aren't too many more like Vietnamese, Thai, Filipino places. So maybe it's just around the train station. happened to my sidewalk. This is not that safe anymore. Kevin says the city is named after the airport. Actually this area was completely part of Sinchu City before I was reading, which is where uh, TSMC has its headquarters. Taiwan Semi Manufacturing Company, arguably the most important semiconductor company in the world. Let me cross, because it looks easier to walk on this side of the street than the side I was on.
John saying you don't see much in American franchises, McDonald's, KFC, etc. Occasionally you'll see them around. Chunyan, Chingyan, famous tea. Got to be careful of this. Every once in a while, I got to look at the surface to make sure I don't misstep and fall. Not really that great for accessibility. If you're a, a wheelchair, it's so annoying. Or even hauling luggage. I'm going to cross over and make a left. Anthony asking what's up with all the park motorbikes. Uh, that's actually one of the preferred methods of transportation here. It's very gas efficient and space saving. You still see some election advertising here, even though the elections are over. It's going to take a while to get rid of all of them. But um, the motorbikes, you can just park them here. And parking for the most part is free. That's one of the big uh, hassles of driving in Taiwan. If you're driving a car, looking for parking. Hung Miao asks if the airport is nearby. Yes, Taoyuan is the area where the airport is. But from where I am, it's actually kind of far if I were to walk. Seven Eleven. The uh, Lao Jie River Station is like a block or two away.
Christian Hansen saying dental work is probably cheaper here. If you're comparing dental prices from like the United States, it's most definitely going to be cheaper. There are so many scooters here. Desi Des saying everything is much cheaper there, right? Uh, depends what you want to buy. I've noticed that electronics here in Taiwan are actually more expensive. If I were to get an iPhone or DJI Pocket 3, it'll cost more money here. But things like food, medical costs, they're less expensive. Clothing, I think, is about the same price as the U.S. So here's the uh, MRT station, Lao Jia River. Bye bye. The Tao Yuan Metro. I know uh, Tao Yuan is going to be extending their MRT system. We can go in here, I'll show you. You can actually take this to Taipei and to the airport. But it takes a lot longer than taking the, um, the commuter rail, the Taiwan Railways Authority. I think this actually might be more expensive too to ride to Taipei because taking the uh, commuter rail, I think Google Maps was quoting like 70 something Taiwan dollars and I remember taking um, this metro from the airport to Taipei was 160 and then there was a 10 NT rebate the Taoyuan Metro put in that rebate since like three or four years ago I was reading because of uh, profitability and they wanted to give back to people. We'll find now there's a ticket machine here. This is the same Metro that serves the airport. Yeah, I'm, I was right, look. So if you were to take this from here to the airport, it'll be 65. There's Terminal 2 and Terminal 1, but if you were to go all the way to Taipei, it's 160. Well, 150 because of um, I think this is what it is, the special fare scheme. The 10 NT rebate. But a very clean metro, as you can see, just like the Taipei's metro system. Oh wow, this station's pretty new. It only opened last year in April. 
the Laojia River Station, Taoyuan International Airport Line. That's cute, they have that for the kids. Also energy efficient. Escalator slows down to save energy. Yeah, you're right about that, Kevin Wu. No one's jumping the turnstiles in Taiwan. Meanwhile, um, I don't know what it is, but I've been to many different cities throughout the world. I've seen in New York, Boston, Toronto, Los Angeles, people evade the fare. Here in Taiwan, everyone pays. There's a large difference in culture. I want to cross the street and check out this Laojia River. Since this is the Laojia River Station. Yeah, I've seen that, Robert. Um, the new turnstiles that the MTA has been installing in New York. Um, those turnstiles, while they're well intended, they're not really doing the job correctly. One thing, I think they're way too slow. They stay open for a good like five seconds after somebody pays. It gives people so much time to just like piggyback off someone else. The ones here in Taiwan, they're much quicker to open and close. Thanks, Jody Grubbs, $10. Thank you for taking us to Taiwan, a great place. I'm very impressed. Thanks, Jody. Appreciate the support. Glad you're enjoying the Taiwan series. Johnson's D says MTA should hire you to improve their design. Well, um, the thing with Fairgates is that no matter how many times you design it, there's not going to be a method that's 100% foolproof. If people are really determined to evade the fare, they're going to do it. And in many places, it really is a uh, social and cultural issue rather than the design issue and you can really see it here in Taiwan that's a beautiful bird down there the fare gates here are actually pretty simple but most of the people here pay the fare
there's actually very um, a very a very good um, design that works for fair evasion called the Iron Maiden. That's the one that looks like a turn, um, like a cage, and it rotates around. But that doesn't really make it too accessible where people with luggage or carrying um, large items or bicycles. And it's not very aesthetically pleasing too. It's a beautiful uh, river walk here. Also a nice temple across the river. I don't want to go too far down this way if I uh, get stuck and I have to go back or something. Is that gas powered scooter driver allowed to be here next to the river like this? They seem to be the only one here doing that. I mean, pretty sure they should be using the road. There's actually a nice park here, a little bit past the, um, the bridge up ahead. So I'm gonna cross over and take a look. And the night market area is not too far away. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that scooter driver was not supposed to be here. <laughs> Everyone else I see to the left and to the right of me are using the road. Yes, Robert, that's true. Not everyone follows the rules. Um, actually, this is kind of interesting. You'll, you'll probably find this interesting too. Um, while crime doesn't really happen too much in Taiwan, I've noticed that traffic laws and when people are behind the wheel in Taiwan, that's when they can uh, change. not yielding the right of way to pedestrians, speeding. <laughs> you could be the nicest person in the world and when you get behind the wheel, I don't know what happens, but they turn into a completely different person. Sweet little grandma isn't gonna be so sweet anymore. David says tons of road rages in Taiwan. I think it's worldwide. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Anytime 
there's a road um, user, something about being behind the driver's seat transforms people. It's like, I don't get it. This is pretty. Actually, speaking of the river here, there's a reservoir not too far away from here called the Shimen Reservoir. It supplies most of the water for the northern region of Taiwan. I'm gonna check out uh, Guanming Park over here and then the Zhongli Tourist Night Market and then there's like a few restaurants here too, which are worth exploring. Lorraine saying, is the tap water safe to drink there? I've heard mixed responses about the tap water. Um, I've heard people say that the tap water is safe to drink, but you need to boil it. Others say it doesn't. And there's other people that say that, no, it's not safe to drink. You need to filter it. I've actually been drinking the tap water, but I've been boiling it before I drink. I'm not sure if that's a safe thing to do or not, but um, it also depends, I think, on the pipes as well. If the infrastructure is very old, the building is old, then uh, some of the metals and the contaminants from the pipes might leach into the drinking water. So. That's not good. Robert says you can filter it too. Yeah, you can. Or you can just buy um, bottled water too. 7-Eleven or any of these convenience stores, they have bottled water. But even uh, bottled water or bottled beverages, you need to be careful because there was a report I was reading that they were finding a lot of these plastics and the bottled beverages were like leaching microplastics into the liquid. So who knows what that does to our long-term health. 
Of course, it's preferable to have like a glass container, but it's not really practical for a distribution. I would say the best thing to do will be to like carry a water um, testing kit to determine like how many like solids are dissolved in the water and then determine if that's an acceptable level for you or not to drink the tap water. Galaxy Waterfront Tour Map. Well, the park is right across the street from me. This is the night market. Oh wow, look at that. A big sign there, Welcome Zhongli Night Market. Of course, it's not nighttime yet. We're gonna have to wait a while. Ambulance coming. Pulse lost like this temple building. It's gorgeous. I think this park's gonna be really nice too. Looks like there's a small pond there. There's basketball courts. Graffiti is a surprising to see in Taiwan. It's a nice neighborhood park. Hey Leon, thanks for the $5 super chat. I am in Shilin, Taipei. Oh, nice. Thank you, Leon, for the support. I appreciate it.
that sign needs to be replaced. You can't even read it anymore. There's basketball and tennis. It's a nice neighborhood park. And they've got uh, bleachers here too, so you can spectate if you want. Wow, a hot water machine? Wow. James Foreman with $1.99. What has been your favorite food there so far? Oh man, James. Yeah. Um, I don't have one. <laughs> Thank you. A lot of the food here has been excellent. I still deciding. It's the same thing when uh, people ask me about what my favorite food is in New York City. There's just too many to choose from. Are there any uh, play equipment for children here? I'm trying to find this bird up here in the tree that's making this unique noise. I think I spotted it. It's got a lot of throat action.
Johnson says, uh, cats would like this place, lots of birds. Yeah, I know, they would like this place. Not too much in terms of play equipment for children in, in this park though, but still very nice. There's actually a large green space here. This might be good for picnics. Someone let their dogs off the leash to play here. Coleslaw said it's so quiet at that park. It's nice. Oh, look at this. There's a swimming pool in here. I think this might be a athletics facility or a gym gymnasium. That bird was interesting, black and white. Paul Slaw says, does it smell like chlorine? It actually didn't. Maybe we could check out the night market now. NYC walking show is here. What's up, my friend? Hopefully you got some good snow videos. Looks like there's a restaurant across the street on the corner there selling meat dumplings and spicy sauce since 2006. So that um, building with the swimming pool in it, Jung Lee Civil Sports Center, Oh, 
it wasn't a heavy snow. Well, at least it was something. Since it's starting to warm up now, it's getting kind of hot. This was needed earlier, but now it's way too warm. Don't want to overheat myself. Hey, there's a parking lot too. Take a brief look at the sports center. There's a OK Mart right here by the entrance. That's convenient. There's a sign on the door, no uh, pictures or video. But look at this. Um, swimming pool, table tennis court, fitness center, rock climbing, multifunction court, and badminton court. And this is a public uh, sports center or gymnasium for people. They don't even have too many of these in New York, where I'm from. Well, they'll just have like a swimming pool in one of the um, athletic facilities. Oh, well, they have the prices here. Uh, swimming pool is 100 yuan for one time. So about $3 to use the swimming pool. Uh, table tennis, $3 an hour for a table. And the paddle is uh, $20 a piece, including a ping pong ball. Fitness center, which is the gym, $50 an hour. Rock climbing, you need a reservation. And badminton, I know badminton is popular here. Yeah, it's a very affordable um, sports complex. And there's also a locker here if you don't want to 
bringing your belongings in and worry about them. You can just put them inside the locker. I'm really impressed with this sports facility. Very nice benefit for uh, the people here. Yeah, ping pong is popular and also badminton. Oh, they are, David. Those are like the Amazon pickup lockers. So you get your packages delivered there. B. Griffin wonder why those curved bars are over the sidewalk. My guess is to discourage people riding scooters from using this. ZLCHS. My guess, Zhongli something. I don't think it's a city, it's how he ends a city. High school. Okay, these uh, tree trimmings, why didn't they take them away? They just cut them and left them here? But yeah, I can see why they need to be trimmed. It's like growing on top here. I thought we'd be at the night market area already. Maybe it's around the corner. Granted, um, we won't be able to see the night market because it's not open yet. Oh, look at this. This is why I wasn't at the night market because this is the park. I gotta come around this way. And we had the uh, school there. That got rid of the shortcut. Yikes. I don't think anybody lives in there anymore. The old fire extinguisher too, the label's even fading.
think there's a laundromat to my left. Okay, Dexter Laundry, I've seen these machines in the US. Um, looks like for a washing machine this size, it's 70. I'll do the uh, math for you. Just give some perspective of how people live around here. So 70 is that much. It's taking a look at what make what watch out. Let's see. Yeah. And this is a uh, 30 yuan for one. This year, we got soap too. I think that was uh, the owner who was wondering what I was doing, but I couldn't really express myself. I just said I'm overseas Chinese and uh, did it with a smile. It looks like the laundry machine is actually uh, quite pricey compared to uh, other costs here in Taiwan. Two twenty-five for a machine like that. There's 7-Eleven. I don't want to uh, get too off track where this night market is, so let's see. Looks like I can go down this way. Oh, here's another uh, laundromat. The machines look pretty new though, so I'll give them that. There's the residential area. Seems pretty quiet. I actually wouldn't mind living in a neighborhood like this. You got a lot of services here, the train, laundromat. You got the schools too. And of course, the night market, was, which is close by, which I'm going to. She's 
she's carrying such a huge load. I think I see a playground over here. It's a nice looking playground. The play equipment at this playground looks a lot better than the one I saw in Taipei. Bags for collecting dog droppings, except I don't see any bags, so. That's the only thing I could say bad about this park, there's no doggy bags. Okay, it looks like over here I make a right. We'll go to the main street. And the night market is not too far away. Took a much longer way than what was necessary for the night market. There's more activity over here now. 193 Kitchen Pizza. Hey, it looks pretty good, just judging by the uh, pictures. They got steak too. There's an Indian restaurant also. Chicken tikka.
Yeah, it would be cool to try a pizza, pizza place in Taiwan. I mean, my last experience with pizza wasn't that good though, when I went to Ken Ding and had a pizza there. Vincent C. I've been to Taiwan many times, just came back in May um, last year, I guess. Found out that small shops close most of the times, weekdays or weekends. Um, I do see some small shops sometimes close up. And I think coming up with the Chinese New Year, you're going to see a lot more places close down. So after I get past this corner and make a left, that's where the night market is. But we're not gonna see a lot going on now. At least I don't think so because it's the day. Got 7 Eleven. Okay, there is a lineup for whatever this is, even though it's not the night mark, uh, night time. 50 yuan for. Pork floss, char siu, lettuce. Kind of looks like a burrito a little bit. Looks good. I know, Johnson, uh, they look good just looking at it. This one even has a longer line. Oh, this is a gua bao. Pork bun. So the line is for this one over here. Looks like they're putting something inside the fried dough. Pickled cabbage, perhaps, for 40. And there's some kind of meat there. It looks good. Oh, wait, that's a, a sausage. Fried dough hot dog. Whoa. I think I'm gonna review this on Action Kid Extra after I'm done with you all. <laughs> that looks good. Hey, night market is, uh, you don't have to come at nighttime to enjoy it.
Um, I'm just eyeing down there. There is, really isn't much open down there, nor do I see any other long lines. So uh, I think I'm gonna start waiting in line here. And I'll end you off. If you wanna see me uh, eat this, you're gonna have to wait until I publish this on Action Kit Extra. It says it's been here since 1973. QQ is the only thing I could read. <laughs> Actually, no, I think uh, the second character is Hua Flower. Wait, is the first character Dou Hua? Dou Hua QQ. I think so. The issue is with these night markets, it's actually hard for me to eat these because um, I have no place to put the camera and stabilize the camera. So I'm gonna have to find a place with like a bench or a platform. All right, um, I'll see you all later folks. Thanks for enjoying the live stream. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button. See ya. Bye bye.